All right, we are going to move into our next presentation, then we're going to have a short break after that for some afternoon tea. Let me tell you a little bit about Marcelo Bonato. Marcelo is co-founder and co-CEO at Recoded. Recoded are a social enterprise set up to help war-affected people learn coding skills and offer them scope then to use those skills to help them get work to get empl employment. Recoded was started to give talent living in untapped communities the opportunity to access the digital economy. Marcelo's deep curiosity about leadership and about innovation in the social sector has led him to work for a variety of different organisations from government to social enterprises with a focus always in the area of education. He's also previously co-founded two social businesses working at the intersection of education, conflict and technology and he's worked on uh, human rights and peace building programs in uh, Myanmar, in Bosnia, in Colombia as well as West Africa. He's a 2021 eLab Workforce Fellow at Columbia University, where he received his Masters in International Affairs back in 2015. In the last few years, uh, he was actually in lockdown at home, which is not here in Australia, but uh, in Portugal. During that time, uh, they rescued a ginger tabby cat from the streets of Istanbul called Hazelnut that now lives with him and his wife in Portugal. They also had their first baby during lockdown, a baby girl called Sienna, just three weeks ago. Uh, she was born here in Australia where Marcelo's wife is originally from. So as the parent of a three-week-old child, which he is, he may well be the first presenter at a conference to fall asleep during their own presentation. And we should allow him, uh, uh, make sure you give him a huge round of applause because he might be a little bit tired from, uh, from being up with the baby. He's here to talk all about Recoded and he's actually making his Australian conference speaking debut appearance. Please give a huge round of applause and welcome Marcelo Bonato. Thank you. $5.3 trillion. This is the market size of the technology industry. And it is expected to continue to grow at a pace of 6% year over year. Technological change today is advancing at a fast speed due to digitization and also frontier technologies like artificial intelligence, blockchain, the Internet of Things, and also big data. It is affecting every aspect of our lives and will continue to do so until there is no separation between us and the digital world. There are arguably many reasons to be excited about this revolution as there are to be concerned. The one I'm interested in is rising inequality. North America, Europe and Asia, including Australia, today control 90% of the technology sector. 10% is the rest of the world. In an even smaller share is countries that have been disrupted by conflict. The same is true about where jobs are located and who gets access to education and employment opportunities that will allow for meaningful careers in technology. So this is the face of technology today. But with an estimated global talent shortage of 85 million by 2030, there is a chance for the digital economy to be more diverse, and more equal. Five years ago, my wife and I started Recoded to solve the disconnect between education and employment in countries affected by conflict. We wanted to give equal opportunities for men and women in places like Iraq, Turkey, and Yemen. I was raised in a typical middle-class family in Brazil, that placed most importance on education. I was lucky to go to private colleges, schools, and to learn English from a very young age. But it was not until college that I realized that talent is abundant, but opportunities were not. 
During my university years, I had the chance to work with high school students from a poor community in Rio de Janeiro to design and publish a weekly newspaper for their community. I was blown away by their ideas and the determination that they had to see this project through. Except that our lives were just very different. I was going to finish university and get a job. Most of them would never go to university, and some of them would end up involved with crime and drug addiction. From that moment on, education was my purpose. And I went from Japan to Egypt to New York to Senegal until a double displacement crisis in Syria and Iraq led to the beginnings of Recoded in 2014. The Middle East region where we work today has one of the largest young populations in the world, over 100 million people. That's four times the population of Australia, just to give you an idea. It also has one of the highest youth unemployment rates in the world, at about 38 percent. And some reasons for such a high number are the high growth in the labor force, skills mismatch, a lack of work experience. But you add wars, in a global pandemic into the mix, and then you have an even greater and more dramatic impact. At Recoded, we believe that anyone, anywhere, should have the opportunity to join and thrive in the digital economy. To date, we have trained hundreds of young people to start careers as software developers and UX UI designers. Some of, some of them are refugees, Some have seen and gone through a few wars in their lifetime. All of them have had very few opportunities to fulfill their potential, because crisis after crisis have kept them behind the rest of the world. Our programs are completely for free and 100 percent online. What you see here is uh, the graduation of one of our cohorts on Zoom, this year. Our programs are immersive learning experiences, typically lasting for five months, during which our students go through technical skills and soft skills. Soft skills, in my opinion, are their superpowers, what makes them human. These are things like effective communication, critical thinking, working with teams, and more importantly, self-awareness and self-management. At the end of the boot camp, they have to deliver a real-life project. This is an opportunity for them to work with teams and also to apply some of the skills that they've learned. That is the last mile before they go out in the world and find a job. And let me tell you one thing, they really do not disappoint. So what you see here is an example of the kind of work that they do. It is a prototype of an app that is trying to solve food waste designed and developed by, by our students in Turkey. It, is, it shows not only the raw talent that they have, but also how socially minded they are. It is incredible work that they do and it shows that they are not only concerned about getting the best jobs or the best salaries, but also how to make their communities and the world a little bit better. On average, 90% of our students finish our programs, and 93% will find a job within six months of graduation. About 45% are women, a number that is still disappointingly low in an industry that is dominated by men. One other impact of our program is pay it forward. Today, recorded graduates are hiring recorded graduates. For example, one student just got an internship, and the senior developer that interviewed her 
was a former recorded student. Another student in Iraq said that one-third, one-third of his company is made of recorded alumni. This is our little dream from many years ago becoming a reality. But I'm not sharing these stories with you today so that you can give us a pat in the back and say, well done. We're proud of what we have accomplished, but we're just a drop in the ocean. We've had too many industrial revolutions that uplift only a few, while leaving many behind. For this new era to be equitable, access to internet must be seen as a human right. Several countries in the Middle East have less than 50% of their people online. This number is even lower in Africa. Our students are atypical because they are able to secure access to internet connection in a laptop. But many cannot, and they will stay several steps behind. They will never catch up. And if we are indeed committed to a more equitable, a more diverse workforce in technology, then we need to live up to this pledge. Companies everywhere can take action and do small things, simple things, like removing a degree requirement from a job description, or hiring remote workers, giving them support, and hiring them from underrepresented groups. There are many reasons for me to make a case for diversity. Diverse teams constantly outperform their peers. And in some cases, by as much as 25% based on gender diversity alone. Diversity at work means more diverse opinions, ideas, perspectives. It sparks creativity and helps businesses to solve complex problems. These are just three of our students from Iraq and Syria. I know firsthand the power of diversity. Recoded today has 46 employees in, from 17 nationalities in 14 countries. It is what makes our workplace vibrant. It is what makes us understand our students better and help them to achieve their dreams. But still every day, I think this is not enough. I could be doing more to create more opportunities for more people. We all could be doing more. So it is time for us to change the face of technology. And I want to leave you today with the stories of three recorded students that show that change is possible. This is Payam, born and raised in Erbil, the capital of the Kurdistan region of Iraq, where she has spent her 23 years of life determined to find ways to express her creativity. Today, she's one of the trailblazing women breaking the glass ceiling as a UX UI designer at one of the digital finance startups in Iraq. Thank you. Another superhero is Ahmed, who, as a 12-year-old in his hometown of Sana, Yemen, taught himself how to fix his first personal computer. That was the day that he fell in love with technology and solving people's problems. Today, Ahmed has not one, but two remote jobs, one with a US-based startup and one with a company in Estonia. And now Ahmed is able to build his dream workspace at home, as you can see in this photo. And this is Shahed from Raqqa, Syria. When the Islamic State took over her city in 2013, Shahed was forced to flee her country with her family and go to Turkey. 
Her ability to overcome challenges is extraordinary. After Recoded, she worked as an engineer for one of the biggest telecom companies in Turkey. Today, she has achieved a childhood dream, and she is pursuing a master's degree in machine learning in London. Now, she had hopes that she can inspire other women in technology to follow her footsteps. Thank you so much. Thank you.